Yes, it's me, Jatin Sapru, bringing you another exciting, action-packed, fun-filled episode of Crypto Tales by Coin Switch. Every week, we invite some crypto expert from India to have a chat with right here on this set to allow ourselves to know more about this fascinating world of cryptocurrencies. And today, I've got a young whiz kid who'll be joining me on the show. But you know the drill by now. I begin the episode by dropping some fun trivia right at the start. But aaj ki trivia, aap ke liye fun ho sakti hai. James Howell ke liye nahi hai. Who's James Howell? I'll tell you. Back in the day when platforms like CoinSwitch did not exist to make our lives in trading in cryptocurrency easy, people used to buy bitcoins and store them on their hard drives, computer ki hard drives. Or Newport, which is a town in the UK, waha ke ek shaks James Howell ne bhi yahi kiya. Unho ne khari de, saade saath hazaar bitcoins, 7,500 bitcoins, because back in the day, it was very cheap and he stored them in the hard drive of his computer. And then what did he do? He forgot about it. Yep, he did. Aaj ki rate mein, wo saare saat hazaar bitcoins ki value hoti bas 400 million dollars. Yep, that would have been the value. Now, us hard drive mein dal ke, wo bhool to gai. Lekin kahani mein ek aur twist tha. He had two identical hard drives. So one day, he picked the hard drive with the 7,500 bitcoins in it and threw it in the trash. Yep. Many years later, now Bitcoin is splashing across the headlines, the prices are going up. James Howell realizes he's got 7,500 Bitcoins. So he pulls out the hard drive, which he has. He plugs it into his computer, only to realize he's got the useless drive. James Howell still is trying his best and spends his days arguing with the city council and pondering over his lost treasure buried somewhere outside the city in a garbage dump. With James Howell's story out of the way, it's time for me to invite my young whiz kid of a guest onto the stage. Now, he's got two extremely successful tech startups already. One, a blog called Techie Scoops and the Blockchain School. He's working with crypto startups around the world as a marketing advisor and a consultant. And the fascinating bit is, he's only 24 and just graduated from college. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Saurabh Sharma. James Howell ki thodi sad story humne sunayi hai to cheer up bhi hum karayenge. What do we need to cheer up? We need someone with a big broad smile, a lot of accomplishments and someone who's nice, young, bright and colorful just like Saurabh Sharma ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for joining me on Crypto Tales. How are you? I'm happy to be here first of all and I'm I'm doing great. Two successful ventures already, 24 ki age pe in the tech sphere. Start kahan se hui hai journey? I wanted to do something different, right? I was always passionate about uh, building or doing something of my own. While writing, I stumbled upon blockchain. I stumbled upon Bitcoin, honestly. But something was more on the emerging technology side. There's a community based out of Toronto. They recognized us uh, mm. as a top three channels in Asia who were appreciating or writing about blockchain. Then started receiving a couple of invites for blockchain conferences. The blockchain school. Yeah. How did that come about at such a young age? How did you decide that, hey, let me start a school? I was talking to a couple of people and someone just pinched on this. You're from India, what's wrong? Where are the, the supply of engineers that's coming from decades? And so India is like a mass producer of techies, right? Mm. We, we produce and provide software developers to the, to the world. But this was not the case with blockchain. And I found uh, awareness and education is a missing bit. That's where the blockchain school happened. It was just an initiative and now it has turned into a business idea for sure. Sabse pehle, simplify it. Because blockchain, when anyone hears, aadhe log to isi kar dete, nene, ye complicated hoga. So blockchain is made up of blocks which are holding data. Back in the days when uh, there used to be everything on registers, just take that up, put it on internet and try to understand that something that's on internet, right, holding the data and is more secure, distributed. So this is basically spread across computers globally. So there's no central authority. Decentralized. Decentralized. Th these computers are linked. That basically builds a network of computers. One transaction has multiple copies on all computers. So that now uh, it's also temper proof, right? So if, if I'm messing with one computer data, 
there are 10 other copies as well. We say blockchain is technology of trust, right? So internet when evolved, it has solved major problem of connectivity. But trust was the major factor. We were too much dependent on central uh, bodies and middlemen on internet. So that's why we thought, can we scale it up and, and make it decentralized? Peer to peer is a good example. But you and me are the parties involved. So why can't we both deal with each other in ourselves? But we need something. We cannot deal in air, right? So that's why we are leveraging technology here. Such a ye ki it still sounds like rocket science. Uh -huh. So you can understand if someone says, yeah, I'm a little hesitant getting into cryptocurrency. Mm -hmm. So I can understand that. It's it's like very simple, okay? So tell me this. Televisions, right? Mm. Evolved decades back. Uh, we purchased television. Do we do we even know how it works? Do you know how television works in the background? Every technology is simple when you actually get into it. But investing in crypto is definitely not difficult. What is it that Bitcoin hasn't offered mm. that now there are so many other startups? What sort of uh, solutions are they aiming at providing. Okay. Why not just settle with Bitcoin? It's not other way. People look at it, Bitcoin is a, as an asset. They invest into it. But uh, we needed something beyond, right? We want to build the next internet uh, kind of a revolution, right? With blockchain. How do we do it? We do it obviously building application in this area, right? And that is where Ethereum comes in picture. Now don't confuse. Ether is a cryptocurrency, right? Mm. Ethereum is, is a blockchain, which gives you power to build great applications. It has evolved a couple of years back and today you won't believe the value locked in decentralized finance is more than $100 billion. Wow. See, if you look at uh, the traditional uh, finance world, right? There are a lot of loopholes and somebody need to solve that. Give me some other examples. Some other examples to simplify it. Where you can blockchains. Ka istemal ho sakta hai. You know, maybe something like Rosemarra ki zindagi mein problem solving for the authorities. As a use case, elections is a hot topic for India. Right? And we have heard that elections may there are a couple of challenges that uh, democracy is facing or India is facing. What if we bring election on? Uh, because again, we, 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 want, we are saying that blockchain is technology of trust. Uh, healthcare, education, supply chain is a big topic again, right? So I'm drinking coffee. Uh, if I need to understand the entire process of from where it's getting created and coming in my hands, this can be put on blockchain. Everything that has data around, that has transactions around, information around, can be put on blockchain. And then you're saying it becomes sort of sacrosanct. That data, yeah. once it's up on the blocks and the blockchains, oh. is probably where it's the safest. Safest and cannot be deleted or edited or things like that. Good job. This was the idea that a lot of people, this information is probably not as easily accessible. So thanks a ton for this. Polygon you said, right? A polygon. And Matic. 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 I've been reading a lot about it. I mean, Mark Cuban's very bullish yeah. on it. And there is an Indian connect to this. It's an Indian home ground project, right? It evolved to solve challenges that were there with Ethereum, like gas fee and things like that. Matic is the coin. Matic is the coin. So uh. coin, like right, fuel, right? Uh. Matic is the coin. Polygon is the network, it's the blockchain. Ye Indian connect ke naam pe, mere portfolio mein kaise nahi ho sakta? I'm gonna get on to coin switch. I'm gonna get this. I mean, purely there is an Indian connect yeah. to this. This has to be in my portfolio. What I've realized is that if you get on to coin switch, while I'm yeah. learning more about cryptocurrencies, I'm also taking some hints and diversifying my portfolio. Wow. Yeah. While you were talking about it, I have Polygon, Matic as part Whoa, of my portfolio. Congratulations. I mean, that's how easy it was. You've got a few? Yeah, obviously. Hmm? Let's come down to crypto, yeah. right? What is your view on it as an investment? And are you personally invested in it? Yeah, so yeah, I, I do invest in cryptocurrencies. There are too many mainstream assets where people invest money. Yeah. Right? But cryptocurrency is relatively new. Yeah. Right? People do think that Bitcoin is of like, what, $50,000. Honestly, if we look at the entire picture, it's still early and, and, and you're not late to the party. And that's why I'm also taking too much interest into investing in cryptos because mm. it gonna pay off in, in the longer run. So if someone sort of missed out on yeah. Bitcoin at a great price, yeah. there is still a lot that it, crypto is gonna offer. It's just the beginning still. It's in the, it's an actually an exploration phase, right? When we say the use cases are evolving, hmm. it's evolving. Uh, you name any company, they are spending millions and millions onto research and development around blockchain. So that definitely means that it's gonna come mainstream. It's actually, so it's happening now, right? Because India is talking about cryptocurrency. Mm. The world is talking about cryptocurrencies and it's definitely going mainstream. But yeah, as I said, you're still early. 
And and I think the movers and shakers of the world are yeah. talking a lot about it, and that's oh, that's yes. getting everyone's interest, right? I mean, okay. the Jack Dorseys of the world. Uh, there is Elon, Elon Musk, Musk. So they have understood the power of the technology. Uh, they understand money. They they have the game, right? These are the people who are definitely shouting out loud when it comes to cryptocurrencies. They have their own favors for sure. Uh, they have their favorite cryptocurrencies, mm. but uh, the best thing is uh, they are considering it. Bitcoin. Huh. Or Ethereum. Interesting question, and I have an interesting answer to this. Okay, mm. if everything got executed very nicely, uh, Bitcoin can be that currency which can be basically used for for the for this universe, right? Uh, but I'll have to choose Ethereum. Yeah, after building up, it could take you to Mars. After Dubai, Thailand, <laughs> Spain, it could take you to Mars. But you still opting for Ethereum. Uh, I'm still opting for Ethereum. Uh, uh, there are two things, right? Store of value. Right? Uh, even Bitcoin blockchain, but you can you can build things, right? But at that scale, which Ethereum is actually brought in picture, a lot of great applications be built on Ethereum. Bitcoin was the first generation cryptocurrency. Yes. Ethereum learnt yeah. a lot from it. Is the second generation, yeah. but now all the new coins that are coming in, they're all learning from the previous one and trying to make the experience and transactions better. Yes. And will this now continue to happen? This and will. is it a win-win situation for all the investors? It is a win-win situation because the more opportunities you have, the more options you have, you love it, right? Every time there's a new blockchain coming in or mm. there's a new product coming in, that's where the cryptocurrency comes in picture. There's no coin that is coming first; it's the technology that's coming first, and then you have the coin which is powering that technology. Just like so many other subjects that mm -hmm. are taught, mm -hmm. right, which might be new, which makes them more fascinating, uh, could this become mainstream? It's just a matter of time. Right, so the moment applications are scaling so rapidly, the moment use cases are scaling so rapidly, there's definitely uh, the evolution that I can actually imagine, and and that's the mission. We really want blockchain to go mainstream, and I think adding this to curriculums in schools and colleges and universities, this can just be cherry on the cake. Like, why not? I'm I'm teaching blockchain uh, here to a set of audience. Uh, why not? Teachers in schools and colleges teaching blockchain to everyone, and then we are in a in a, in a definitely new world, which is like people are already an expert and they are known with blockchain. Sorry, Sharma, I don't know about you, but मेरे को बहुत मजा आया शो में. मार जाने की सोच ना मत, because mm. I am going to block your travel <laughs> and chain you to <laughs> India. To be very honest, we just wanted to simplify it for all the viewers out there, and I think Sorab has done a phenomenal job in doing just that. More power to you, Sorab. Cheers. Wasn't that amazing? I know it was also intense and it was also complex, but guys, I mean, cryptocurrency might sound like rocket science. At least buying cryptocurrency is not that hard. All you need is CoinSwitch, India's simplest and largest crypto trading platform. With that, it's time for me, Jatin Sapu, to wrap up this episode of Crypto Tales. Promise, I'll bring you another fascinating guest to discuss everything about the cryptoverse right here on this very set. But until then, take care, unblock, and join the chain.